Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And, uh, you know, there's so much going on in the world today. It is a tragedy to see uh, the death toll that is happening in Gaza now in Lebanon as well. It just seems like those that are leading the country of Israel are just bent on utter destruction. And, uh, and it's not going to stop there. Iran is going to be next on the list, no doubt Syria. Uh, I go back to uh, West General Wesley Clark, and when he spoke about those uh, seven nations that would be taken out in five years, and it seems that Israel is really trying to fulfill all of those, uh, those very actions that are happening. And uh, th this is what really has concerned me the most. If you'll notice here, uh, by the way, this little boy here, a little Palestinian little boy, he sp sp speaks about his mother that was pregnant, was shot by a Palestinian soldier uh, when she was seven months pregnant. And of course, this famous t-shirt that you see right like here uh, that says both in Hebrew and in English, one shot, two kills. You may not realize this, but this is actually biblical prophecy unfolding right before your eyes. I'm going to share that with you in just a moment here. And, and by the way, I'm working on a new YouTube channel. It's going to be uh, actually called Five Minutes Left uh, YouTube channel. You'll want to subscribe to it. These will be messages that are only five minutes long. I'll be looking at everything you can think of. If you only had five minutes left, what would you like to know? What would impact your life in such a way in five minutes? What could I say to you, uh, especially from a spiritual standpoint? So I'll be putting that together here and starting those videos very soon. Uh, here on Israeli News Live on our shorts, if you're watching our shorts, by the way, I have started a series there of one minute. It's called A Minute of Truth, where I just take a minute of your time and share biblical insights there in one minute. Uh, so I hope that's a blessing for many of you guys that are listening out there. And don't forget to support this broadcast, because believe me, without your support, none of this can be possible. It's really my wife and I have dedicated our entire lives to try to bring you the truth on every angle possible. All right, let's go right into this, though, that I was uh, sharing with you. And by the way, that's IsraeliNewsLive.org. And listen, and real quick, before, uh, it's better to say it now than later, because not everybody will go through the entire video. And I want you to hear this entire video. But if you go to our website here, IsraeliNewsLive.org, right there, you can donate online. Really, donating online is, is much better, much easier. It helps us out tremendously. Um, you know, mail makes it a little bit harder for people to get to doing the mail, now, mail nowadays. But either way, you have the address as well as that there. Uh, LifeWave EMP Shield with the current state of war everywhere, EMP Shield is so vital. All the information there, the EMP code, INL50, etc. Definitely check that out. All right, let's go right into this whole setup here that I wanted to share with you. This here uh, just came in, and it actually is a pregnant woman in Gaza that had been gunned down by a sniper. And that's what's interesting. The picture depicts, on the back of this guy's shirt here, it depicts the guy wearing a shirt in Hebrew, one shot, two kills, a, a scopes bullseye on the belly of a pregnant woman, and clearly in a traditional Arab garb. Uh, and that's just really sad there, especially in light of the fact of this particular video here. This woman here uh, that they're fixing to come to, she has been shot. And uh, undoubtedly shot in the stomach from what it looks like briefly there from the blood and everything that's on her. You'll see the blood on the ground. They're, they're still shooting at them, the snipers, for trying to rescue the woman. You know, I, I, you know, like, like, uh, there's been several commentators that have actually stated. You know, they'll say that, you know, we we understand what Israel went through. We're not condemned. We're not. We're not belittling the fact of what happened on October the seventh. Although Hamas is, and we're going to prove it later in a broadcast. My wife and I will do. Uh, uh, either today or tomorrow, we're going to prove to you how the Hamas is an organization that was started with Jewish backing. That's going to shock many of you, to, especially really upset Israel to find that information coming out to let you know the truth. All right, so they're, 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 they shoot this poor woman, right? And uh, and I want you to see, you'll see the, well, they, I guess I already passed that part there. Um I saw it earlier. You can look at the video later for yourself, but you'll see a little bit of the blood on the ground there where she's been shot. 
Uh, this uh, happens all the time, you know, and this here, this little Seriously, boy. The caption, quote, one shot, two kills. My mom was, was pregnant when we were going to school. They, the Israeli soldiers, and shot my mother in the stomach. She was seven months. Soldiers here. It's not the first time. This has been going on for about two years. Now, let's take a look at this. What do we? What can we think about this biblically? This is going to shock you because typically everybody thinks of, oh, these are the Arabs, right? And Isaiah, we're going into the book of Isaiah, chapter 13. I'll just so you can see for yourself, chapter 13 of Isaiah. And we're going to be talking about the Medes. And people are going to say, oh, that's Persians, those are Iranians. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. And everyone that is caught shall fall by the sword. Their babies also shall be dashed in pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, their wives ravished. And behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. Who shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. And their bows shall dash the young men in pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. It actually doesn't even say children. It says banim. Al banim lo tachus enam. They shall not even regard the fruit of the womb, neither shall they spare children. And that literally is the fruit of the womb. Just like we'd say in English, it is the, um, uh, get, get my brain to go to the right verse again here so I can find it for you and everything. Uh, here we go, right here. Upari betan. The pari is the word for fruit in Hebrew, and betan is the belly. They won't even care about the child that's in the womb. And interestingly enough, it's the sons. How many times have we heard Israeli politicians say since October the 7th event, had we killed off those children, the boys, we would not have the future terrorist of today. So targeting the sons is very important for them. But in this case here, here you have it there. They have no pity on the fruit of the womb. And Israel's, the, the, the Israelis are the ones that are doing this. You would think it should be, like we read here, the Medes or something. We think this should be some, some Iranians doing this, right? Well, they'll say, well, Iran is the one that backed them. And they came in and they did all this evil to the children of Hamas. Do you know the children they got burnt was from Israeli tanks that came in there and shot and killed and burned up the people. There was no weapons that, the, that, that Hamas had that could even do what was done by these tanks. So let's take a serious look then. Who really are the Medes? The Medes are a Middle Eastern empire, okay? This is ancient media going up into Turkey. They were part of Central Asia. Oddly enough, the Khazarian Empire comes down into northern uh, uh, and far eastern Turkey into the Median Empire. Isn't that interesting? They're also, the Khazarians are considered Middle Eastern peoples. And at the same time period of the, the Medes of Persia, they were in the far northwest corner going into the Turkish Empire, just like the Khazarian Empire. Now, some people are going to say, oh my gosh, Steve, I cannot believe that you're even suggesting that the Jews are Khazarians. That's a conspiracy theory. Is it a conspiracy theory? Or is there something true about it? Well, right here, this rabbi right here, and by the way, they took this video down after I reported on it once before. This is Rabbi Fink. Uh, he is a Russian rabbi, and uh, just like it says here in the title, Jewish rabbi, Turkic Khazars shaped modern Jews. Yeah, he, he's not afraid to say it. 
he wasn't embarrassed by it. He just simply said, you know, there was, they had migrated that direction, some of the Jewish people, after the dispersion uh, of the Roman Empire. They mingled in amongst them, and that's how they became Khazars, marrying in amongst the local population. That rabbi right there, Rabbi Fink, uh, Fink there, or Finkel is his name, here he is here on his uh, own channel, it is a Russian uh, video program. Finkel is his name. Now he's talking about the Azerbaijanis and descendants of, uh, of the Khazars. Interesting. Azerbaijanis. And, of course, what are the Azerbaijanis? The Azerbaijanis are part of the Med Medo-Persia Empire. Exactly. That is the Medo-Persian Empire. And this man goes into all of that. Uh, you know. And I think what he's trying to do is... In his way of doing it, he's trying to elevate the fact that it doesn't make them non-Jewish, but they're still Khazarians. Well, in other words, they're Medes of Persians. They are fulfilling the biblical aspect that we have here, that they're going to have no pity of the fruit of the womb. So it's no wonder why the Israeli government could care less about Palestinian women that they're pregnant and shoot them, and then they'll make a t-shirt and do something like that. You know, Jesus said there were Jews that were of the synagogue of Satan. They claim that title, but they're not really truly of God. And, and, and by the way, it's not just Rabbi Finkel either, right? Let me give you another famous figure for, him, for you, Noam Kamaski. He is he's still living, 95 years old. Born in 1928, Avram Noam Kamaski is an American professor and public intellectual known for his work in linguistics and political activism, social criticism. You know, you've seen this guy many times on television and stuff. Very well-known well figure, right? Well, oddly enough, believe it or not, Noam Kamaski has actually grown a beard. And, of course, they're kind of making fun of it as if he's going to get even longer, right? But... He has gotten a pretty long one. He's got a small one right there, but it did develop like even in this picture here. He's get, as he got older, he just I guess he decided, okay, I don't need to shave anymore. He's actually uh, here. Reddit shows a picture of him speaking publicly with his big beard, right? I just kind of show you that so you know that this guy right here is Noam Kamaski. He is speaking there with a beard there. I want you to hear just for maybe about one minute what he has to say about the Khazarian theory. All right, just for your own record, so you know for yourself. Listen in. Our theory, there's a theory, it's widely accepted as anti-Semitic, that, that, that Ashkenazi Jews come from the Khazars and they don't, they're not Levantine, but it's, DNA it's, tests. It's not anti-Semitic, it's a question of fact. So, uh, Shlomo San, for example, has argued that I think probably exaggerated, but it's simply a question of fact. If my ancestors from the Ukraine have Khazar uh, roots, changes nothing. I'm Jewish. My grandfather was Jewish. Uh, uh, he, uh, my family happens to have a uh, story saying that we're descended from the Baal Shem Tov. Okay, that's part of the yeah. culture. There you go. Now, the guy that's interviewing him is trying to say this is anti-Semitic and everything. But here, Kamaski comes out and says, it's a matter of fact. Isn't it odd and striking that Israel's leaders, predominantly more than half of prime ministers of Israel's, come from either Ukraine, Belarus, and, and of course, Netanyahu being Polish, Polish himself, for example, and they all come from a Khazarian background. Well, he doesn't have any problem with that. And Jesus, when he says they are the synagogue of Satan, but he also says they say they're Jews and they're not. Wow, that's an interesting thought right there, right? That's his words on it. And quite frankly, Isaiah saw this coming and he actually said he would stir up the Medes against them who shall not regard silver and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. And some people would say, 
Well, the Jewish people definitely like silver and gold. Why do they not delight? Why do they not regard it? They, they already have it all. That's the implications. The Hebrew, they use these words to translate. It's not technically exactly the way they're tr translating it there, but still the, the, the whole theme of that is they have no need of it because they already have it all. And that's really the truth of the matter, right? And their bows shall dash the young men in pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And I don't care if it's if it's through this war with Gaza, with with Lebanon that's happening even now. And Gaza has not stopped. Even lately, they killed 80 people in a strike on another place, a refugee place there, where they tell them to move. Every time they tell them to move, it's systematic, systematic, constant, move here, move there, and always they attack the very place they send you to. That's the new safe haven. Oh, safe haven for what? Safe haven for their bombs, I guess. Think about what you're supporting. Think deeply about what you're supporting because biblically, it's not lining up any longer. It's not lining up on what people think. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. I hope you have a blessed day and pray for the peace to come to that whole region. Because right now, we are truly seeing, as it says, when the blood begins to drop, it's, it's not going to get any better. I'm Stephen Benoon. God bless you and have a great day.